In today's economy, more people than ever are looking to buy and sell businesses. But how do you do it? Welcome to The Deal Board, presented by Transworld Business Advisors. Straight talk about real deals and real people. Listen to stories, interviews, and expert advice to help your business sale, merger, or acquisition process. Now, here are your business exit experts, Andy and Jessica. Welcome back, everybody. And today we have an episode featuring the CPA industry. So we're bringing on experts to the show to talk about what business sales look like when you're trading accounting practices or CPA practices. Yeah, we have a great show and we have an expert is Ray Coppell and Ray Coppell has been with Transworld uh, just about as long as I have. I think he joined a couple of weeks after me, so well over 25 years. And he is a, as they say, recovering uh, CPA, but he was a CPA in New York. Uh, he understands the business very well being a past CPA. And he not only talks about CPA practices, but the sale of legal practices as well. So we handle both those uh, we, we don't sell as many legal practices, but we're seeing it more and more as baby boomers get old, right? Right. Both in the legal industry and the CPA industry, uh, a majority of the owners are in the baby boomer generation. So we're going to see more and more of those sales over the next five to 10 years. And there's going to be some great opportunities for people that are already in that industry to acquire practices for clients to grow their practices. Ray talks a little bit about the licensing requirements of buying a CPA or a legal firm. Um, so there is some stuff in there that you need to know, but there's just a lot of great opportunity as well. And a lot of these uh, practices could get 100% financing. So it's a wonderful opportunity for you to either grow a practice or I always keep talking about kids coming out of college and they got maybe they got their master's degree and uh, or they got their legal you know they got their law degree uh they got their master's in tax and they could instead of joining a big firm why not buy a firm right i mean huge opportunity you get to mentor with somebody who's been in the industry for years and you also literally overnight can have hundreds or even thousands of clients in your practice. So lots of lots of great insight today from um, both Ray Coppell and John Wall from Live Oak. Um, hopefully this is a great episode and you learn a lot from it. If you're in either of these industries, there's a lot of opportunities and you can check out the ones we have available for sale on our website at tworld.com. Yeah, there's a lot of opportunity and Ray does dive into not only the legal aspects of what it takes to buy either a law firm or a CPA practice and some of the state laws that are involved. Uh, but he talks about that transition, like you were just talking about, that it is a specialty kind of transition that, you know, you're probably going to have to stick around for a little while because it is all about customer retain retention. And we just dive in also to the valuation, specific valuation questions on uh, professional practices, either CPA or legal. Well, let's get to it. And hopefully this episode is great information, whether you're on the sell side or a buy side in the CPA or legal industry. Transworld Business Advisors is the world's largest business brokerage and mergers and acquisitions firm with over 500 brokers in nearly 200 offices worldwide. Transworld's team handles thousands of business sales every year. To be connected with a qualified business broker or learn more about the buying and selling process, visit tworld.com forward slash the deal board or call 888-719-9098. Hey, welcome back, everybody. And we have a special guest today. We are talking about professional services. And specifically, we're going to talk about accounting right now. And we have someone who's got a background in that. And his name is Antone Dejeuner from Transworld Business Advisors of South Bay in uh, Southern, beautiful Southern California. Love that place. And uh, we are also at our conference. Uh, so if you're a little background noise, uh, excuse that. But uh, Antone, welcome. And why don't you give us a little bit of background about how you know about the accounting practice uh, business? Sure. Thank you, Andy. Um, I've been in the tax and accounting practice for about 20 years. Um, prior to joining the Transworld Business Advisors, I owned um, independent tax practice and converted to H&R Block and built that H&R Block practice and sold it back to the company. And... After that, I joined the Transworld uh, Business Advisors team. Great. And so, so why did you why did you decide to convert it? I mean, you saw that was a good exit opportunity for you. Absolutely. Yeah, I think the timing was right. It was uh, 
2009, when I converted it, uh, at the time the economy was sinking and H&R Block had great promotion in their company-owned offices and converting to um, individuals or independent tax practitioners to join the team. Um, and uh, the price was right. Um, they were almost giving it out for free at that time, so I took that advantage. Um, and a uh, few years later, about actually six years later, after four, uh, three H&R Block offices, uh, they were in a buyback mode at a market price, so I sold it back. And That's great. Was very so let's, let, let's talk a little bit about the market price. What do tax practices usually sell for? So tax practices uh, usually sell for between one to one and a quarter uh, multiple of the gross revenue. Right. And what, what are they looking for in that gross revenues? Um, in the gross revenues, basically, the retention is one of the highlights in, 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 in a business. And the length of business always matters, obviously, the uh, sustainability. And um, buyers, you know, and another thing that they're interested in is the transition of uh, that accounting practice or a tax practice to a new buyer and how the seller will help with the transition period so they can retain the clients. So. Right. So there's sometimes a retention clause in the deal or a holdback. And what, what was your deal? Or what are you seeing in other uh, practice uh, acquisitions? Absolutely. Well, there's a couple of things that, that are common in this. You know, um, it's a good business candidate for seller financing um, to start with. Um, and sometimes the, the pricings may be fixed based on uh, a gross revenue uh, uh, retention rate uh, that will be part of the contract um, if you maintain X amount of the revenue that is already stated. Uh, then the selling price could be adjusted up, upwards or downwards uh, in the contracts to make sure that there's a good retention in the business. Sure. And so what's the market like right now? It's pretty hot, right? Market is hot, um, you know, with a lot of people exiting from the industry, you know, a lot of good businesses that are built out and uh, um, uh, retirees and the baby boomers that wanted to exit and... Uh, uh, if you're looking to a, a tax practice or accounting practice and any, like any other businesses that are hot right now, it's, it's one of the businesses that uh, we see in the market. Yeah. And we see, you know, a lot of people wanting to buy practices, right? It's the easier way to expand. Certainly if you have an accounting practice and you want to expand, uh, buying someone else's business is probably a good way to go. Absolutely. And, you know, tax practices, you know, could be sold anywhere. You know, if, you, if you're a CPA, if you're an enrolled agent, you move them from Florida to California, uh, the practice could be sold. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, if, if you have a profession in doing that, you can buy a practice anywhere. So it sure. makes it a unique business to be sold. So if somebody wants to get more information about selling their tax practice, uh, how best to get in touch with you? Sure. My direct line is uh, 323-252-1305. Our email will be adejene, D-E-J-E-N-E, at tworld.com. Antone, thanks so much for coming and shining a light on the professional practice uh, acquisition market. Thank you, Andy. Hey, Andy, you know what time I think it is? I think it's time to talk about our deal of the week. Deal of the week. <laughs> Sold. Hey, we're back and we're talking about deal of the week. And we have Michael Shea from Transworld Business Advisors of Central Florida. Uh, Mike is a very prolific uh, broker selling lots of businesses. And one of the businesses he has sold is a CPA firm. And that's what we're talking about today. Michael, welcome. Hey, good to be here again. So, Michael, tell us about the ins and outs of selling a CPA business or what happened in this deal that uh, might be typical of selling a CPA firm, but might be atypical as well. So, yeah. Um, so this young lady, um, friend of mine, actually, I'd met the networking group. Um, she had, you know, on several occasions called me over the years uh, trying to judge what her business was was worth and, you know, doing some exit planning. So, um, and, and like a lot of people in professional spaces or specific industries had heard 
you know, rules of thumb thrown, thrown about like yeah. it's worth a certain amount of books or only the bookkeeping value of the business um, or only the tax practice. And, you know, I kind of went in a different direction with her and kind of got into it and said, well, let's look at the comps and then let's look at your financials and see what it was worth. So she was a small practice. It was just her. Um, she had built a, a really, you know, the coin of phrase boutique little, little CPA firm um, with clients that fit her lifestyle. So right. you know, she had a healthy tax practice and, and her requirement for her, um, her bookkeeping clients was that, Hey, you got to, you got to do what you're supposed to do, follow the law and uh, with no funny business. So when she finally came to market, um, she was doing, you know, about uh, just shy of $200,000. She was making around 80,000. Um, and, you know, she was willing to do some seller financing. So we got a little bit of a premium on it. And uh, at the end of the day, we, we priced it at 165. We sold it to almost, you know, if I was to, do, to, to draw a picture of a, uh, of a, um, a clone, uh, almost her clone who was 20 years younger than her, another wow. CPA, another woman, uh, wanted to be a mom, have a, you know, get out of the big six, uh, accounting firm and being on the road and have some quality of life and two peas in the pod and it went off without a hitch and we co-brokered the deal and, you know, it ended up selling for that 165 number. Oh, that's great. And so was there any terms? Oh, you said some seller yeah. financing. Yeah, we had, we had $25,000 in seller financing over two years. Um, at five and a half percent. I don't know how they actually came up with the five and a half, but I wasn't going to get in the middle of two CPAs. They figured that was the number that was going to work for them. Okay. So, you know, it was, it was, we went to market. And what was interesting was um, as soon as it went to market, uh, we had about nine showings and it was gone in 45 days. Yeah, um, they're highly sought yeah. after. Oh, they're, they're so rare that uh, when you get it, it's almost like, okay, we're done. If you price it right, if you get exorbitant um, and, and your expectations are out of whack. Because at the end of the day, labor is the, is the variable. It's the tipping point of how much you can work. And since they're professionals, you have to bring on relatively higher, you know, higher paid staff to kind of scale the business. So, you know, the margin doesn't always drop to the bottom line as they get bigger and bigger. But um it, you know, it, it, it was, a, they're sought after because they're just so darn rare, like a lot of, you know, specialty professional practices. Right. And, but I, you know, the one point that you made, and I think it's a great point of why, even in a business where it, you would be highly sought after, like a CPA practice, like a law firm, it's so about finding the right buyer. You talked about the person being like a clone of a 20 year younger. That's what it's really about is finding the right buyer. And you, even if you're really highly sought after selling your CPA practice or your law practice to the wrong person is disaster. So that's what Transworld's great at. Yeah. It, it, you know, as a CPA, the seller had seen seller financing scenarios go south and it was so much easier and her confidence was higher when she, you know, paired up with a buyer that, you know, was ethically on the same plane, um, had a similar background in, in terms of values with re regard to raising a family and having some quality of life. Um, that made the, the deal very palatable. I still talk to both of them. Um, the buyer actually still uses the seller uh, at tax time uh, to come in because the practice has grown. So, you know, hey, she thought she wanted to totally retire, but um, it was so much easier to so, say, hey, would you like to do a little bit of work at April, put some pocket money in here. Her license is still active. She knows the clients. Um, so really one of those situations where you found the perfect fit for the perfect deal and, and off we went. They were both ecstatic and we still refer work to both of them um, for, you know, QuickBooks Consulting and, and even for, you know, due diligence activities and, and go forward bookkeeping. There you go. Good deals for good people. Michael, what's the best way to get in touch with you if somebody wanted to talk to you about selling their CPA practice? Sure. Uh, the website is www.tworld.com backslash Michael Shea. Uh, on Twitter, it's mshea403, um, Instagram, Facebook, um, and of course, my cell phone, 321-287-0349. Great. Great job. Thanks. Thanks for coming on today. All right. You're welcome. Hey, welcome back. And I have a very special guest today, my long-term buddy, friend, and co-worker here at Transworld, Ray Coppell, who's been at Transworld Business Advisors of South Florida, Fort Lauderdale for 
longer than both of us want to admit, right, Ray? Ah, uh, fair to say. So, uh, Ray, uh, we're talking about selling professional practices, and Ray comes from that world originally. Ray, you were originally a CPA in New York. Yes, I was. And he is charged. And and here in Florida as well. I did that for transition. Yes. Yeah. So, but then of course you're here at Transworld now, and uh, we are talking about CPA firms, and you have sold your share of CPA firms here. CPA. Accounting practices, little bookkeeping practices, variety. Right. So let's kind of like dive right in. Uh, selling, you know, accounting practices, they're highly sought after. We see a lot of people wanting to buy uh, CPA firms and we have the, that ability to help people. So let's just talk a little bit about why somebody would want to buy one, right? Well, there are a lot of factors of the industry that tend to generate interest and desirability. Uh, some of them are, if you just think about it, your account, and you probably most likely stick with your accountant for a long, long run. So the yeah, sure. a lot of retained clients. Uh, it's hard to pick up clients to start. So buying, buying a practice is a common way to get in once you've been in practice to buy a practice to expand and grow. Right. So, so that's the easiest way to grow. And we see a lot of accounting firms wanting to buy other account firms and plus to get talent, right? Absolutely. So, um, so let's talk a little bit about what it costs or what, what the valuation model is for, for valuing a CPA practice. What's interesting about the value of, of a CPA practice and accounting practices, even bookkeeping practices they tend to all revolve around gross revenue. Unlike a lot of a lot of other businesses that revolve around various factors, it's such a hard driver within that area, specialty area of business brokerage. Yeah, so people do value the gross revenues. It's kind of like a rule of thumb, one times annual revenues. That's it. <laughs> and every, you know, everything sort of revolves around that. From there... You know, that's the starting point. So it gives you a sense of how large the firm is. Usually that'll give you the size of the kind of staff, um, perhaps specialties that they work in. But what you really want to understand that what, what's valuable to a buyer is not tax season work. Right. As you probably can realize, accountants are really, really busy in tax season. Yes. Getting work that's not in tax season, although it's there, and it tends to spill over from tax season, having that as a recurring, recurring revenue for a variety of things, mostly from businesses. That's why business accounting practice, whether they're CPA, H&R block type operation, or a bookkeeping practice, the value is in the business clients, the recurring business clients. And it could be various things, various niches that tend to drive the business. That's another valuable part. Because expertise that comes along with that tends to glue the clients to the practitioner, practitioner right. and practice. So we see them doing different things like whether or not they're involved with doing quarterly financials or sales tax or, you know, a, a true tax practice or bookkeeping, like you said. It really runs the gamut. And then they could be specialists, right? We've seen some specialists come through. No question. Uh, various areas, real estate, investing, valuation, forensic services. These are real kind of uh, lucrative and other designations you can get to complement the CPA. That's another growing trend in the industry. A lot of different initials after the name that bring in other value and add quality and retention to the clients. It's all about retaining the clients. Yeah. So they want to know that they're going to be able to retain the clients. And then, you know, it, and, and uh, retaining the clients is they're not going to go so far. It's hard to sell it far away, right? That's a big factor. Unlike a lot of businesses that really just going to stay where you are. That's part of the reason why you're buying the business, what's there. Many times you'll find, particularly in the smaller practices, let's say there are up to three, you know, real full-time practitioners in the practice. The buyer is going to want to buy the practice and move it to where they are. So that's unusual. They, they don't want a long-term lease. They, they value key people, right. but they want to be able to move them somewhere not too far. Right. That's different. So it's uh, it's mostly a local business, right? Yes. Still, much, still. I yes, mean, so for what we're going to work with, unless you're looking, you know, there can be, and it's possible, particularly if you find a very desirable 
a niche practice that a larger practice will want to acquire, like a, a regional or national, will want to acquire that accounting practice because getting expertise, it's all about the talent. Yeah, yeah. Matters. So, so and, and across the nation, sometimes there's little rules that in, in certainly CPA practices, there's rules from state to state that might come into play. Yes, there's only two states left, New York and Hawaii, that only allow CPAs to own CPA practices. Otherwise, you can a non-CPA can own up to 49% or a group of CP, non-CPAs can own up to 49% of a CPA firm. So it doesn't mean that it's exclusively the purview of a CPA right. to buy a CPA firm. It's and, interesting. And you've seen some other trends like maybe, you know, uh, the with the... The advent of people being able to do books and records online now, right? And from anywhere. So it's it's changes, particularly larger firms and the audit function that was traditional traditional way into a public accounting. That's getting squeezed because of technology. So technologists, that's one of the reasons why CPA firms expanded to non-CPAs because tech people are really key to the CPA practice, the artificial intelligence coming in, all the different factors that are attributing to everything else in society are heavily affecting CPA and law firms. Right. So retention uh, affects the way that these things are structured sometimes, right? That's very key. One of the other aspects besides this focus on one times grows is unlike many businesses that we routinely sell, CPA accounting and bookkeeping practices will very commonly have signed a one year after closing true up based on what the original growth they were bringing into the practice, what is it like after a year? And it can go up and down within certain margins. Right. So, and, you know, we do see some specialty firms that do this, but, you know, they're, they're in good hands with Transworld, right? No question. It has more, more to do with your relationships, whether it's referred through a client, a practice, a business that you sold, their CPA may be thinking of selling, they know them, they're old friends. It's network, 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 even more than a specialty the big, the big reason for that, not only because they're going to know you, like me, trust me, you know, all those kind of regular factors, it's also that there's a very high demand for these practices. So it's really about packaging. And going back to one key point, when you're asking about what the practice is like, you want to get the mix to what is based on the businesses versus personal. That's going to be one of your first questions. How much is business? How much is personal? How much is monthly? How much is quarterly? How much is payroll taxes? How much is sales? What are, and what other services are they doing? You know, that's going to be your key right. element to the first question you're going to get. Right. So <laughs> it, switching gears a little bit, uh, you know, we're talking about professional practices. Uh, law firms do sell or merge, uh, and we don't see as many law firms being sold. We have handled several uh, in the past, but... Uh, you know, they can be sold as you've, you've done some of the research and talked to a few people, right? Yes, I relied on a few of our expert local attorneys. Uh, I'd like to mention Ian Berkowitz in Boca, who helped with some uh, responses, and our, our uh, trans world outstanding outside general counsel, Jackie Howe, as she has merged her own practice. Yeah, with Shuts and Bowen. Yep. Now with Shuts and Bowen as a partner. Uh, so to go on to that law firm, a lot of it correlates in that, you know, the areas of specialty, where they're located, how established they are, you know, how much of the revenue base is recurring. Both of both right. the attorneys Again. mentioned that. It, it's the key. Like, what are you buying? You know, what are you buying from this practice? Is the practitioner going to stay? Are they retiring? Are they ill? Or, you know, what's causing the change? It, that can be very, you know, similar to other businesses. Yeah, and we've seen a lot of mergers going on out there in the law space. And we've seen some, uh, listen, we've had some highly specialized law firms, individual practitioners sell. So it, it is something to be sold. You know, even we sold a psychology practice. I mean, as personal as this stuff is, you know, we want to get out there to the, the, the professionals that it is valuable and it can be sold. Even though it's you, people still will come back and people are willing to buy. No question. I, mean, I just had a handyman in my house the other day saying, can I sell my business? I said, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. So, so uh, uh, about value for, uh, you know, law firms, it's uh, you, like you said, recurring revenue is a key. What else? 
you know, the revenue trend, is it, are they increasing? Are they picking up market share? Are they expanding? Uh, where are they located? Is it downtown? Is it suburban? Is it rural? Right. Uh, and uh, again, what is valuable? What are they transferring? There's a couple other key elements of that specific to law firms. But one key thing to know, just to be, first of all, the Bar Association, the American Bar Association, has a rule that the entire practice or a specialty part of the practice can be sold. So they do sell. Right. First thing. Right. Know. So the so the the multiple is it one times earnings? It's I mean or, excuse me one times gross. Oh, sorry, correct. It's closer to one times gross. Right. Um, you know it again, all kinds of factoring things. If the practitioner is just deceased, you're going to not find much continuity there. Right. Depending, perhaps there's a really strong staff, but you know all things given, it's going to take time to transition, and if they're willing to work through a transition they're going to be able to get about one times of their what they're bringing. What are you bringing into the practice? Right, and, and, and a law firm probably has some specific legal issues when they transfer as well, right? That's an important consideration. For one thing, in due diligence, Jackie Helm mentioned this in particular, uh, you know, your attorney-client privilege forbids certain looking into files that sure. one might look at some other businesses. Like, who are your customers? You can't right. really say. You know? right. Uh, beyond that, once a practice does transfer, you have to give notice to the clients. Are you going to stay or are you going to go? Right. So if you go, if you're going to take your file and go home or go elsewhere, you have to give them notice. So other like other businesses that you don't put out a notice or you keep it you know smooth as possible, this you specifically have to give a chance to the clients to leave. Right. So most cases they're going to stick because you're going to make that transition but still, notice is required. Yeah, we've seen that a lot in professionals. They stick around for a little while. They tend to stick. You know, you got to earn your business again every day. But this in particular, right. obviously. Well, this it. is all incredible information. But, Ray, if someone wanted to get in touch with you to talk about their practice, how best to get in touch with you? Best is to call me at 754-224-3121. Be a pleasure to speak with you. Ray, thanks for coming in today. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Andy. Hey, Jessica, you know what time it is? Money time? Almost. It's time for Listing of the Week. Hey, we're back and it's Listing of the Week. And we are with Linda Broom from Transworld Business Advisors of Grapevine, Texas. And, you know, I have to say her listing, I have done some valuations in this space. And these businesses are very hot. It's a franchise massage therapy business. And there are a few franchises out there, and this uh, particular franchise is uh, highly traded. So, Linda, why don't you give us a little bit of idea where it is and or sort of where it is and, uh, you know, some of the numbers. Well, thank you for having me on today. Yes, it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful place. It is in the upscale community of Tarrant County, uh, high traffic um, strip center with a uh, anchor grocery store. So a lot of traffic that comes in there, Starbucks on the corner. So it's, it's, uh, gets a lot of traffic as it comes through and, uh, he's doing really well. He's doing over half a million dollars in, in, uh, gross sales. And, uh, he's, you know, he's asking for, a, um, about, well, $175,000 would be the listing price on that. And his, you know, seller discretionary income looks like somewhere between 50 and 60,000 for this, uh, year. Yeah, that's good. I mean, I know that there's a, a, a pretty sizable build out when they do these things. And also there's an initial uh, package that people have to buy. I, I think the, uh, some of the some of them call it a retreat package and things like that. So uh, there are some assets in this business and it's highly sought after. So uh, sounds like a great listing. And um, so how best for someone to get in touch with you if they want to talk more about it? Absolutely. They could reach out to me uh, through email. It'll be lynda.broom at tworld.com or they can reach me directly at 469-525-0681. I can tell you that this gentleman's willing to stay on and help uh, grow the business with them. And um, as easy as he says, you know, bring in a few more therapists full time and uh, you could actually probably add another third to um, two thirds of income to this. Yeah. And they love that recurring revenue model. That's what, that's what makes it hot. So they have those packages and they sign people up and yes. that's, that's the way they make money. And that's why they're so valuable and really sought after. So I, I'll tell you right now, I know that 175 number is a good deal. So yeah. somebody it's a great should membership give you the model. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. Well, thanks for coming in today, Absolutely. Linda. Thank you for having me on today. Thanks for tuning in to our show today. If you like the podcast, don't forget to subscribe through your favorite podcasting app and leave us a review. If you have questions or suggestions for the show, visit us at tworld slash the deal board or email us at the deal board at tworld.com. <laughs>